morning. Welcome back. As you've just seen, I've been removing some of these tiles uh, from basically from on top of our bread oven dome. Um, and the other day when I filmed in there, I was filming from ground level, just sort of on my tiptoes looking up. And I didn't realise just how bad it was. I mean, these are just the ones I can reach. Reach. I can lean in slightly, but I'm a bit cautious about putting too much weight on the actual dome itself. But I mean, these, I mean, that in itself is really, really heavy. Um, so I've removed a lot of them that I can easily reach. There's one or two around the corner that I can grab. But I thought before I go any further, I'll take you up there and show you what I'm up against. Because um, it's actually a bit more worrying than I thought, really. I can't see any damage to the dome, but... This is a lot of weight, really is. And the 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 thing about these tiles is we haven't got these tiles on any of the roofs. So what they're doing here, I don't know. Whether whether it's been re-roofed at some point and they just threw some of the tiles onto the dome because they could. I don't really know. I, I'm I'm struggling to understand why they're there but anyway I'll, I'll take you up there now and have a look right so I've basically removed tiles from this area here uh, I could easily grab those I dare say this pile in front of me I could just lean into and just take them off one by one uh, that arch thing, that looks like a uh, former when they've been building these brick arches. So I needed one of those not so long ago. <laughs> but I found another one, so that was okay. I don't know what that thing is there. That looks like some sort of hopper of some sort. Um, and you've got all these tiles. Now this pile right in front of you, I can reach all these quite easily. But over in that corner... Uh, there's no way I can get to them. Um, and just around the corner, let me lean in. You can see a bit of damage to that roof. And obviously uh, there's more tiles there. So basically, under all this dirt and debris is our bread oven dome. Now there are a couple of dips in it, just in front of you there in the centre of the camera. But I don't think... I don't think that's actually damage to the dome itself. I think there's a good few inches of this stuff on top. Um, so I, I, I can only assume they've re-roofed it and they've just let everything drop into here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into the actual bread oven and, and just show you the dome. I know you've probably seen it before, a lot of you, but some of you who are new viewers might not have. Um, but... If you can see in the distance there, this um, piece of wood here, sticking out the wall, and there's one there. Um, they're quite significant because they're actually holding the chimney up. And from the other side of the building, where I'll take you now, I just wasn't sure where these pieces of wood ended up. Uh, but looking at them, they look pretty solid. They don't look rotten to me, and that's quite significant. But I'll show you that in a sec. So, yeah, let's let's go into the actual bread oven and have a quick look. Okay, I'll just get a torch just to give us a bit of a help. But basically, I know you've seen this before, some of you, but I'm just showing off really because I like it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, look at it. But what I'm interested in is the roof itself. And, you know, there's a little patch right in the centre of the screen, but that, yeah, that looks okay. Maybe a couple of little bits of damage to the stones. But generally speaking, sorry about the bright dot that's just the torch but generally speaking it looks in good nick and it's a bit of a mound at the back there but that could just be old ash or something another one here 
So, yeah, it, generally speaking, it's in very good condition. But obviously, I don't want to be the one to jump on it and cause cause damage. And actually, when you look at it, it's actually a flat ceiling. It's not a dome. Let me see if I can get higher, just so you can see. The dome is around the edges. Um, now, right to the back where the torch is shining, I think I did measure it, didn't I? And I'm trying to remember how much it is. It's something, I think it was something like 3.2 meters or 3.1 meters deep. And I measured, um, I think 2.8 wide. So, I mean, it's an absolutely huge thing. Uh, but if I damage it jumping on it, then um, I'm into a whole new ball game as far as restoration is concerned. So that's why I want to be really, really careful with it. So one day, one day I actually hope to get this in work again. I really want to get something going with it. It's got such history and to have it sitting here, you know, it's got to be used. And it's actually really unusual because we, we did... Um, a number of viewings where there were bread ovens and they were in states of collapse so this is actually quite unusual to find it in such good condition so especially as the building's been it was empty for the best part of 35 years and obviously whoever threw those tiles on wasn't particularly worried about the condition of it so i'm really pleased it is in this condition anyway back to those two pieces of wood um which actually that's one of them and then that's the other um, as you can see they're supporting the chimney so i've always been worried because that's quite a weight that chimney i've always been worried about where those pieces of wood end up but i can see they're out in the open um, when i say out in the open they're not buried in the wall they've they've come through the other side and they look pretty good to me so that i'm not as concerned about as i was um I think we've shown you that before, but there is a big crack there. So it has moved, but I don't think it's the timber that's moved. I think it's just moved in time. Anyway, that's for another worry. Um, I'm not going to show you any more because I think Charlotte was planning, was planning to show you all this again in one of her uh, Chateau Diaries, as we're calling it. Um, so I won't show you any more and she'll probably tell me off for showing you what I have done. <laughs>
clearer than it was. I couldn't see that corner before. And I've cleared right up to that corner, but I can't reach that with a rake. So I'm going to have to rig something up, something longer. I'll get a longer piece of wood and put a hook on it or something and just drag them out one by one. Uh, doing that's not a problem, just one by one. These are all gone. It's all mounded up though, so I think I'm going to have to rake it all out very carefully over a period of time. Uh, but I think I'm much, much happier now. Um, I mean, I don't know what all this is. I really don't, but I despair. And just to confirm what this would be, you can see all these tiles. Um, just quickly, it's these tiles here with the big lip. Um, so they obviously connect together and that presumably is a finial for a gable end um, and obviously these tiles would finish off the look of the gable end presumably unless you know something that I don't. Um, now obviously there's a gable end up there with a point by the chimney but whether it came from there originally it's a bit grand for that. Well. I'm not going to try and make another piece up with a hook on today. It's um, it's getting a bit silly actually. It's 35 degrees today, which I don't know what that converts to. 100, 100 and something, I don't know. But silly, silly temperatures. So, And the sun's right on that bit. So I'm calling it a day for now. But I'm very happy. I, I just can't believe. <laughs> Honestly, just don't understand it. I really don't. Why do that to something as beautiful as that? And something is historically important as that. And I think it's important um, to preserve these things, but some people obviously don't. Cheers. Oh. So I, um, I chose this piece in particular because, if you remember, I found um, two of these cans uh, in the attic earlier on. Um, and I chose this one in particular, firstly because I love the fact that the copper has oxidised into this beautiful kind of green-blue colour. Um, but also it's got a pretty well-known name here called Eclair Vermoral. <laughs> and um, a gentleman named Victor Vermoral um, invented these cans um, in the early 1900s um, and they are used for spraying fungicide on vines so most of you were right there. So I managed to find the hose that went with um, the can and it somehow attaches to this side here and would have typically been worn on your back like a backpack knapsack and you would have gone around spraying spraying your vines with the fungicide. Um, I chose this bit to bring down. Um, somebody said it was from World War One and we've only actually thought of World War Two here so I don't know how that came to be here. Um, it would have had a strap on and you'd put water in it and drink out of it. I can't see any maker's name on it at all, but maybe if we clean it up, it's 
covered in dust and cobwebs, so we might find something on there. So this was another piece I found interesting. It's really pretty actually. It's got this um, enamel kind of glaze on the front of it with um, with a pretty floral design. Unfortunately, it's got a fair few cracks there. Um, but it's set in a metal, I'm not sure what that might be, a pewter, no, it's not heavy enough for that. But um, on the back, it's hallmarked with Paris and it's got a stalk there. Um, looking like it's feeding from um, an urn with the initials ED either side. Initially we thought it could be a trivet because it's got a foot on the bottom here but we can't see evidence of where there might have been another one. Um, maybe, maybe around here. So it's a bit kind of unsteady. Um, I think that's probably the best idea because I can't imagine what else it would have been used for and it's kind of off centre to the handle. But if anyone else has any ideas, um, let us know. Um, I brought this lantern down. We have got one in the other attic actually. Um, and again, this is totally covered in dust and dirt. I don't think this has... Oh yeah, it's got something on there. Can't really make out royal something. Can you see? Royal R O Y A L U U X. X. So Royal. that's French, isn't it? Royal X. Royal X. Hmm. That needs a good so key. maybe we could hang this in one of the tower windows. And there was just, just one more thing I can see over here that I found. Two more horseshoes. And I know Mum and Rose have put um, the other three up that they found on the uh, barn outside. So this one is probably around the same size. It's um, probably a shire. Yeah, off of one of the shire workhorses. But there's a little one here as well. Um, could have been, I don't know. A little pony. Yeah. So that's nice. They can join the collection. And i just better show this. Um, somebody was upset because they saw it come flying out the window. Oh, that was me. I knocked it with but, the... Um, <laughs> they said they were upset to see the one pot thrown out, but we've still got it here. But somebody's used it to mix paint in and the handle's missing. So, um, I don't know. I think it is quite an old pot. It's yeah. just very battered and well used, isn't it? Yeah. It did have a soft landing because we threw a lot of insulation and um, <laughs> cardboard up. So it was already bent like that. I'd just like to say thank you to Susan for buying us two sheets of plasterboard off our wish list. Um, with her permission, we're going to put a little note on the back of it. Um, to say that it was donated by her when we do the, well, I think we'll do the pantry ceiling first. So if anybody else would like to buy some plasterboard, we'll happily put your name on the back of it. Thank you, Susan. And just to mention, yesterday we hit 7,000 subscribers. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe. See if we can get it up to 8,000. Mm. That'd be great. So we'll see you on Sunday. Bye. Bye. Bye.